Man, it's crazy. Um, like I say, I grew up in a neighborhood. Probably a lot of people that's not my cousin that say to my cousin. And then <laughs> let me tell you this story. It's crazy, bro. So my great grandma had 17 kids. Damn, so I got 17 aunties and, and uncles, uncles. and then damn. they kids. <clears throat> know what I'm saying? So they, they kids. So I got a lot of cousins damn. and a lot of family. So you said a, a bunch lot of nose. You had to mix in some nose. Yeah, I had to mix a lot of nose. But at the same time, I ain't gonna lie. The people I love, I'm kind of soft. I'm soft. Yeah. People that don't know me outside, I'm like, ah, right, yeah, fuck you. Right, yeah. You stay over here. You stay over there. <laughs> I ain't fucking with you. But the people I fuck with, like, I don't know what I'm saying, like, I always been one of those people that want to look out for everybody. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, man, if I. If I, if I had a hundred million dollars in the bank, like, if I, and I gave 40 over the way, like, I'd be okay with that, knowing that yeah. I helped somebody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I always had a big heart. So for me, um, for me, what I did, I had a list, bro. I had a list. I had a list of everybody that I messed with, like, my boys, uh, my family, my aunties, my uncles, my cousins. I had a list of everybody that I messed with, and I had a one time stipend of, something that I'm gonna give somebody. And once I gave them that, so like, say if I had a uh, auntie or something, like, oh man, I need help with a water bill, I need $300. But I had on the list, I, I was gonna give a 7,000, like, here, take this. And after that, like, I got too many people that I can't, like, every time something go wrong, you know what I'm saying, I can't, um, every time something go wrong, I can't, I can't be, then my peace of mind won't be right. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd be like stressing all the time, you telling me all these sad stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though I like helping people, but uh, let me tell you one crazy story. That one of the oh, craziest. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I like that you did that. I like that yeah. you said that because I think some of the young guys could um, mm -hmm. could add this to their thing, right? Right. So it's like a one-time thing. Yeah. One-time mm -hmm. thing. You got a list of people who you gonna look out for, mm -hmm. and you get a certain. You give them a certain amount. Yeah. And that's it. And then that was it. Yeah. I had a list one time, and that mm -hmm. was it, and then can't because, come back no more. Because I feel like that puts you in position to where. You know, cause you know how like, you know the saying is like, you could give a hundred, you could say a hundred yes, and right. that one no is like you ain't right. never done nothing them, them first right. time. Oh yeah, for sure. So like, I feel like when you when you kind of like helping with 200, 300, maybe a thousand here and right, there, right. you know, you setting yourself up to them saying f you down the line, right? Versus giving them a lump sum. So you know, I would want to encourage the people watching, to, right, right. especially young kids that's coming up, that's coming from where we come yeah. from. To be, to say, hey man, I'm gonna do this just one time and right, that's right. it. You, you know, and that's if you want to. Like you don't yeah. have to. Like you yeah. don't have to do nothing if you don't right. want. I know some people that ain't giving cousin, sister, Nobody, nothing, nothing, right. nothing. But I mean, if you do want to look out, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that was just one of the ways yeah. I did it. Like, wow, well, okay, I did a little something, but I ain't overextend yeah. to where it's hurting me. But I think that's cool. a little something where you still like giving back. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just had to listen. Cool. And for the most part, everybody respected it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really, I ain't really had no issues. But you know, there's gonna be some people still come back. Yeah, man, I know you say you's only gonna give me two thousand, but man, let me get, <laughs> let me get a couple more thousand. Right, right. Nah, yeah. for sure. But one of the other craziest too, man. One of the funniest, man. Let me say this shit was so funny. It's like, it's my first few years in the league, man. I had a, I had a, uh, I ain't gonna say which one. Uh, <laughs> he gonna know, but oh well. I had a cousin. He was like. Man, cuz he called me, man, cuz I need the man, I need the whole son. He like, man, I need he like, man, cuz I need uh I need nine hundred dollars. I'm like, why you need nine hundred dollars? He's like, man, I got three teeth in my mouth, man. My girl can't even stand to talk to me no more. I got three rotten teeth in my mouth, man. It cost three hundred a piece to get a pull. Uh -huh. Man, I died. I like boy, but just get some uh start doing some mouthwash <laughs> start brushing your teeth or something. He like, man, I got three rotten teeth, man. They 300 a piece, man. My girl, she, don't, she can't even be in my face no more. My breath stinks so bad. <laughs> oh my God, bro. I need $900. That's what, and that story for real is the one that made me think about, like, okay, like, what's a way that I still can look out a little bit, but, you know what I'm saying, not overexert myself. Mm -hmm. but, um, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I got a big family, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 17 aunties and uncles, you know what I'm saying? The kids and my brother's sister. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that was one thing that I did, and you gave him that was cool. That time, nah, nah, I ain't giving him no so nine hundred. Like, come on, man. I'm like, bro. nah, nah, I ain't get that nine hundred that time. That was one of <laughs> them. That was a no. Was that was a no on that one. So, but that's the, that story, the one that made me like do the list and be like, all right, that's yeah, it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that yeah. story for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, right, see, so, that story so, was it. So it, all right. Um, so what happens in the NBA? Like, so I, you mentioned that like, there's no secret how much we made, right? Mm-hmm. And um, but like 
when you when you haven't like if you haven't made that kind of money, right. you don't really know, right? Right. Facts. So like so like think about it. Let's say all right, let's one of my contracts I signed was uh was uh four years, sixteen million. Right. So but nobody knows you don't get sixteen million, bro. Oh yeah, nah. You know what I'm saying? And and you don't get sixteen right then and there. No. You know, you, you know, it's spread out over those years and you get half of that. Right. I felt like I feel like if 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 friends and family knew that, they'll right. be like, Man, man, I ain't gonna even ask you for nothing, bro. Like But now you let know me say I don't know if you remember it's early. I don't, right. I don't know if you remember <laughs> early, I told you that. If I made if I made seventy thousand, sixty thousand, I, I was rich. If I was remember right, I told right, you I right. say, man, if you're in the neighborhood coming from where we're from, mm -hmm. so imagine people seeing one M, they right. saying that you made one million, right. they thinking you got everything. You know right. what I'm saying? So from their standpoint of view, like they never saw that type of money. So um that's when you gotta educate you gotta educate uh, them. Yeah, you gotta right. let them, especially the mm -hmm. ones that's closer to you, you know what I'm saying? You gotta let them like, hey, that's I ain't you, got all this like what you think, like it's gonna right. take some time and you know what I'm saying, I got my I, Gotta stay organized, cause if That's I what fall we, and I blow this, you know what I'm saying? No way. They gonna be looking like they gonna be like each one more. They gonna be like Brandon. They gonna be like you, the one that blew it. They ain't gonna be like your financial advisor, or your sister blew it. They gonna be like you blew it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, but this is and that's another thing, right? So how I look at it, like, um, all the people that ask you for your money for money mm -hmm. over the years, right? You know, if you blow it, right? Right. They gonna go back to living a normal life, right? <laughs> Happily though, right? Exactly. They gonna be happy making the money they make, right? But you not, right? Because you gotta, you been living a certain lifestyle. Now you ain't gonna be able to live the same. You so, gonna have to. So my thing take is, be happy, right, right? That I'm living how I'm living, and and you be happy with um, the money that you making. You right. see what I'm saying? Yeah, facts. Because like that, that's that's another thing. Is like people gotta like I feel like. When it comes to athletes, bro, like, man, people gotta love you. Oh yeah, right. Like you love For you, you. And like, right. they, and like exactly. they love themselves. Right, exactly. And and, and, and um, and kind of just understand that, you know, that if I make a million dollars, right? Right. And okay, it's getting cut it off in half. Right. right. But also, like, I got a lifestyle like that I, oh, I want to yeah. live. Right. And it ain't the lifestyle in the hood where I'm where I'm eating uh, <laughs> quarter Dixie cups and, right. exactly. and, and, and hot dogs from the corner store, right? right? You like your meal two hundred dollars a you, pop every you, time. You feel me? Right. Like, so I wanna be able to eat car, I wanna be able to do what I do. Yeah, and not yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, nah, I, I definitely feel you. But yeah. like you said, at the end of the day, man, you gotta be comfortable with a lot more no's and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If them people not comfortable with that, then they don't really love you like anyway. you say, like they like like anyway, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how you, the first time you tell somebody no is really how you figure out, you know what I'm saying, who in, who in your corner or not, you know what I'm saying? How they react to that no, you know what I'm that's saying? That's tough, too. That's, that's how tough. you know if they're in your corner or not. So, um, ha yep. have, you, have you seen anybody that you was close to that you're not so close to because of money? Um, or, or everything was cool on your end? Not really so cool, not so cool because of money. I haven't had... I've been fortunate. I haven't had too many, too many, too many Situation meltdowns. Like know that. what I'm saying? But I had a couple of family members that have been disappointed because I said no. Know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I was like, no, um, you know, extended mm -hmm. family. But I mean, it's part of it. Know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Absolutely, it's part hey, of it. Hey, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, man, shit, it wasn't meant to be. So mm -hmm. you got to protect you and yours. Know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So going back to your NBA career, right? Mm -hmm. What what um what routines that you did uh, either preparing for games? Right. Um, in practice mm -hmm. or preparing for games on game day? What were some things you did? So one of the things, like, um, Mr. Cerebral, <laughs> Mr. TJ, um, he um, he asked me, like, what's some things that, um, just piggybacking on that, uh, like, anything that I learned that helped me later on in my career, and mm -hmm. that was one of them, mm -hmm. like, how to prepare. Like, that first year, I was watching everybody and their routines and how they get ready for the games and, Stuff and they teach me how to be, taught me how to be a pro like right away my first year, like uh, like just watching Ray, he was one on, just watching him, he, like, he was in the routine like before the game, he getting there before everybody, he come get his shots up like he shot the same shots, he mm -hmm. shot the same like I'm not sure if it was like 42 or 47 shots and that was it, the same shots he get in the game, he did that every time like before the game, got him ready, got his nap, got his peanut butter jelly sandwich, went and played mm -hmm. so. It just taught me how to be a pro, you yep. know what I'm saying, right away. Um, one of them, one of them was rest, was sleep. 
people don't understand how important sleep is into your game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, to your yeah, to your performance in the game. Because when I was in college, man, I was under sleeping like a month. I'm sleeping probably like five, six hours. I'm waking. I'm like, damn, why I'm always so tired. I'm like always tired. I'm like, man, I wasn't sleeping enough. Mm -hmm. um, but then I got the NBA. I mean, I'm sleeping at least like, I mean, obviously at least eight. You know what I'm saying? Eight you, to eight, you, eight to eight to nine hours. But you got spoiled though, because we had Doc, right? So like normally, you know what I'm talking about? Like so oh, normally yeah. like um For sure. Like, you know, we'll practice day before. Mm -hmm. Then the morning we'll have a shoot around. Mm -hmm. And then the evening we'll go to the game. Right. So so but Doc would say sometimes like if we had the practice day before, right? We'll just show up to the gym at five. So you'll get to sleep all that night and you can sleep that day. And you don't get to, to you get to the gym like five, you know, five um PM that evening, do a little walk through, then get ready for the game so you well rested. Right. Like I feel like mm -hmm. he, he brought like the well yeah. rested thing to the league. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um um but do did 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 you add a certain routine to your game though? Did, so from watching the guy the pros, did you add something and, and did did you develop a routine or? uh yeah the, watching them just helped me develop my routine. One mm -hmm. of them was Ray. Like mm -hmm. so what I started doing is like um at first I'm doing like different dribble moves and stuff that mm -hmm. I didn't even really even use in the game. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm, what am I doing all this for? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, I started getting routine. I started shooting the same shots that I'm going to shoot in the game. Like, first yeah. of all, I always come off, start off with floaters, come in, dribble handoff, pin down, like floaters, come in, um, you know, then I get my spots in, then I come stuff off a of dribble handoff, I come off a of pin down, I'm fading to the corner, getting my shots. So I started being precise on all the shots I'm going to get in the game. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That was how I'm prepared. I'm gonna prepare. Mm -hmm. um, so just that routine right there was um, that was that was good. So once I get to the game, got to my spot, I know exactly right. where I want to get to. Right if again. I'm on the sideline, I know either I'm getting to the middle or I'm getting to the baseline. Those are my two sweet spots. So I'm escaping the way a dude guard me, and I'm in the pick and roll, and they down in the pick and roll towards the baseline. I'm giving the dude maybe in and out a, a step back or something, getting straight to my spot. Mm -hmm. All right, he's sending me to the middle. I'm coming off, I'm getting my floater, I'm getting to the middle, I'm there and I might get my side step. So I'm like precise, like no matter where I'm at on the court, I know exactly what I want to get to. And I think, just, I think just that routine of me knowing that and watching that, like mm -hmm. I just kept doing the same stuff over and over. So that's why my stuff was like, it was like automatic. Like I just, either I'm getting to my spots and I'm doing the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why NBA players are so nice, right? Even mm -hmm. the last guy on the bench, like, you know, mm -hmm. some people be watching the game and see the glass guy on the bench and be like, I could give I could give him buckets, but oh, yeah, nah. But nah, this guy is. is working on what each one is saying. Mm -hmm. Every game, every game he's working on these certain moves, right. preparing to get in the game. Mm -hmm. So if you catch him in the summertime, he about to give you those buckets he couldn't give in the NBA game. Sure. Oh yeah, for you, you sure. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So um but uh over the years, right, were you ever superstitious in your career? Like where you had to do certain things in order to feel like or think you was so gonna be able to play well? No, nah, I never really was super superstitious. I mean, I was never a superstitious person. Um, no. Mm -hmm. Only thing I did was listen to R&B music before the games. <laughs> wow. That's all. Right. I, hey, that's all I listen. That's so, all I did. So you hey. So you're not a lover. So you're not a fighter. You're a lover. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, I got it. I got it. Hey, man, I got that in me too. But. Uh, <laughs> I always like staying like calm and relaxed. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people all the time, they're like, man, why you so smooth? Why you so laid back? It's mm -hmm. for a reason, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Because if I'm like rah, rah, and I get like, I can't think straight. Like I'm like, I'm getting, I get mad, but you know what I'm saying? So I, I know how to control it. Like mm -hmm. if I do that, I wouldn't think. Like I'd be shooting from half court. Mm -hmm. I'd be trying to dunk from the free throw line. You know what I'm saying? You like I'd be playing like wild and like crazy. So I always been like mellow and chill. And um, you know what I'm saying? I always kept me like thinking like smart and making good decisions. Cause if I if I didn't, yeah, then I'd be From day one, crazy. that's what I noticed about you. Yeah. From day one, he always had this this cool, calm demeanor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's like that's like a gift for a young guy. Oh yeah. yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I I think that's because he did all of them years in college. He was he was like a young OG because like, you know, mm -hmm. me coming out as a as a freshman, right. me getting to the lead, bro, I was like a chicken with my head cut right. off, bro. <laughs> it was like everything was so fast right, for me. Right. And, and, and once everything slowed down, 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's when I start hooping. And then when right. I when I skillfully learned how to slow down my mind even more, right. that's when things got really, you know, right. really easy for me. So, mm-hmm. but for you, like I noticed that about your game from day one. Right. Yeah. You know, you was always calm. Mm-hmm. Always had a wet ball. Yeah. You always could shoot your floaters. Right. Right. And you always moved at your same pace. Right. So um, most people, so it's crazy. Most people are like, oh man, you said like 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 my first year in Boston. They just like, man. Like you said, like you've been here before. Like you, man. like you, like way above your years. Yeah, right, right. And I really was just, I was that way for a reason. Cause if I wasn't, then I was, then I'd be like, damn, hold on, man, you immature, you know what I'm saying? It's all the truth, but you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It just always like kept me thinking straight, and you know what I'm saying? I always kept my, kept, kept me on a, on a, on a, on a good path. Um, yeah, cool. I can go that. So like even when I was younger, like I was in high school and stuff. Um, so like all my friends, though, we all used to get in trouble, like having fun, and you know. So my did school one day, my crazy stuff, and I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, that ain't it. Man, I got quiet, and I like started chilling out, and I just got real mellow. I'm like, man, because I was getting in trouble, and I always like be having too much fun, be chaotic. Now I'm like, man, I ain't gonna be able to make it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be in trouble all the time. Mm-hmm. So I, I got, I got, you know what I'm saying, laid back and just got mellow. Mm-hmm. So that just helped me through mm-hmm. with basketball, life, everything. So mm-hmm. it helped me think straight. So before the games, I listened to all R&B music. I ain't listen mm-hmm. to nothing crunk. Like mm-hmm. If I listen to some hype music, some Jeezy or something, mm-hmm. what? You too hype. What? They be, I, they be like, pass me the ball. I'm like, what? What you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd have been, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have, I wouldn't be thinking straight. So. I, I felt the but same way. Good. I um, like when even when we, you know how like when we go when we leave out the locker room right, right. and we're in the hallway right, right. and people trying to get hype before yeah. we run out. Like I was already hype inside. Right, right. He's like, I don't you really need right. I'm already so, ready. So I right. even even all the way back to high school, I was always hype inside. And like f- the way my the way I work, right? I mean, you know how I am. Like I'm oh, jumping yeah. super high on my J. Oh, yeah. I'm always running hard and all that. Mm-hmm. So if if I'm hype, man, I'm tired before I get in. Look right. at this. Imagine KG getting hyped like that before the game. Like listen. Oh yeah. I mean, he you gassed out because he already right. he he he, he, he kind of like gives so much like. Mm-hmm. Just normally, you know what right. I'm saying? You know, some guys just give off. That's normally. facts. Yeah, before and the game, he was chill. He was, he was, chill, he was super. Yeah. He wouldn't talk to nobody. Yeah. Uh, yo, what's up? Before the game, he <laughs> chill. Like before the game, like he locked in. Like he not talking to nobody. No noise. You know what I'm saying? No noise. Like he yeah, locked in. Funny, but then the game came, and he letting it all out. So yeah. nah, that's a fact. Yeah. So it's like for you know another thing like um when when I used to when I um, when I met TJ right and right. you know I have him you know he training you know my son right. right. And um, you know, over the you know the last couple of years, like he'll have some players come in, and maybe they my son teammate, right? Right. And uh, I'll be trying to teach them the, like some of the jewels that I learned, like you right. know, just how, kind of how like you came in right. all cool to come. I'm trying to teach them how to like approach the game in such mm-hmm. a way, like um, not trying too hard, right? Like not trying too hard to score, right? Because usually when you come in the game and you try too hard to score, it has a reverse effect, right? You know what I'm saying? So I. Like I try to teach Junior, like man, like just be aggressive to make the right play. Right. Because if you if you go in the game just aggressive to score, a lot of times it it, it works yeah, against you. Yeah, because you'll take bad shots, you, and then you know it's gonna look bad. Now get the teammates, like the whole the whole vibe. And you can't off. zone out. Right, for like, sure. Because you the thing about this, your best game, right? Right. Like. You 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 badly thought that night. Oh yeah, nah. You, you know what I'm saying? It just you, came off reaction. For you feel sure. me? Um. What was your best night in the league? My best night in the league? Yeah. Uh, my best night only had 38. I think it was against Houston. Okay. And I was just, just all, it was just all trades. I was just, that was in the league. Um, mm-hmm. I was just, I don't know. You all know, trades. like you say, like when you get in the zone, just one of them nights, you just, you just, you just get into it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't thinking, you reacting, you just playing, everything flowing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just making shots at a high level. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, it's just sometimes that was yeah, mm-hmm. that was just yeah, that was just thirty eight mm-hmm. uh, Houston. And, but. and like you know, in the NBA, like with so many things going on, like you know, we, you worrying about contracts. Oh yeah, you worrying sure. about minutes. You know, you worrying about not getting traded. Right. So with all this, <laughs> with right. all this stuff that's going on, right, you got to figure out a way to stay calm. Right. You know, not be um, so tense. Right. And tight and worried about mm-hmm. things, like bro. Right. You know, like. I was the complete opposite of you when I came in. Right, when you first came. Because, like, you know, I'm a second round pick like you. Right, facts. Um, but not as experienced as you were. Right. So, like, 
you know, I want to make sure I kind of, you know, we inspire kids and, oh, yeah, and, for and sure. help everybody be better. So I want to make sure, you know, kids know, like, when you're in situations of, of, of things not um, maybe going your way, right. it's not the time to worry and be stressed out and be pressing, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's time to be, you know, work on your game, but kind of right. still let everything mm -hmm. kind of happen for you. Right. you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've always been a believer in that. So me, like my approach to the game was always like, um, man, first I'm gonna put this work in, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put this work in when nobody else looking. Mm -hmm. Not when nobody telling me to. Not when somebody saying go to the weight room. Mm -hmm. Not when somebody saying get some shots up. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna put this work in so I can get better. And that's gonna build up my confidence right there. So mm -hmm. it's automatically instilled in me. I ain't mm -hmm. gotta think like, damn, I'm gonna go make this shot. Am I gonna do this? I already been working on it, mm -hmm. I already been doing it. So yep. for me, it was like second nature, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was like instilled. And I'd be like, uh, I feel like if you if you have the same approach every day, then you ain't gotta change. You ain't gotta get ready. You ain't gotta, oh, it's a big game, it's a TV yes, game. Yes, it's a TV game, we're yes, on sir. ESPN tonight, let yes, me get sir. ready. I'm like, man, I'm ready every day. Every you know day, what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm coming to practice ready. Right. I'm, when I'm going to work out by myself, I'm ready. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now when I get to this game, I got the same approach. Like, I'm automatically ready. I ain't got to think like, all right, dance a big game tonight. All right, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, to me, it was like automatic every day. So mm -hmm. the times, like, um, that goes along like with pressure. Like, I had a couple games. I hit some game winners. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? Made some big shots. Mm -hmm. um, always played well in the stretch. And, um, coaches I had teammates like, dang man, that was a big shot. Like, dang, like, 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 right. dang, like you was ready. And I'm like, for me, I felt like I was supposed to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I always had that in my mind. Like, I shit, I was supposed to make that shot. You know what I'm saying? Because you was being yourself. Yeah. And it's, you was preparing like that. Like you, you, you were just saying, you know like, saying? you was preparing every day the same. Right. So exactly. when you go into the game, it's the same. Like, uh, right. like my son just had, uh, mm -hmm. he just had some college coaches come in. Right. And the night before, right, uh -huh. I told him, I said, hey, bro. so this first time coaches come and see right. him at his school, uh -huh. I said, I said, Junior, listen, man, I said, just go and be yourself. Right. Now, eat. look, look uh -huh. this is what I tell him all the time while we right. training, when uh -huh. me and him training. Uh -huh. He probably like, man, dad, I don't know. <laughs> right. So he get to, um, so I told him be yourself the night before. Mm -hmm. But um, so he heard me, right? right? But look, he come back to the living room, through the living room and said, right. dad, I'm gonna be jumping so high tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so he let me yeah, know, like, bounce. so look, look what he doing. He let me know, doing? like, I'm gonna be myself, but I'm about to be jumping so high. So in my head, bro, you ain't heard what I just nah. said. Nah, <laughs> I mean, he about to do something extra. You I'm about to do something else. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So right. I said, Junior, I asked him, like, so I asked him after practice, right? right. How everything go? He's like, Dad, I played well, but. I was rushing my shot. Right. <laughs> I said, bro, I told you. Right, bro. before. Right, you know just be, do what you normally do. Don't worry about it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, he's so young that, you know, things like this is is, is what you uh, – it's better to learn them now. Oh, yeah. Get them out the way now. Mm -hmm. And and so when you make it to college and the NBA, right. everything is easy and smooth. Right. You can You can handle the pressure. You can know to be yourself. Right. You know what I'm talking about? For Whether sure. it's practice or game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's when you come in handy. You got, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Everybody don't have a, a somebody that's played at the level that you, you know what I'm saying? Where you able to, you know what I'm saying, give them that advice and tell them. So I, I think, I think yeah, you get them right here, be straight. But yeah, man, as long as you have that approach, like I say, like you got the same mindset. Like it's like you going to war. Like mm -hmm. when you, like people that's going overseas fighting war, like that's not their first time doing. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they're they've been preparing. They're doing tactical drills. They, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They, they combat drills and all that. So now once they get there, I didn't already, I already, my man or mental was already trained. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's what it's like me, like when it came to the game, like, man, I'm mentally like, I'm every day, I'm saying, I'm already trained for, for mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, for this, for this, so. That's the best way to be, I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every day, man, you ain't got to change. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You got the same approach all the um, time. Um, what would you say uh, was your favorite place um, that you played at and um, over your career and um, your favorite teammate? Oh, damn, man. Your favorite teammate? Man, that's tough. Come on, man. Why you got to give me the favorite teammate? <laughs> All right. Favorite place for sure for me um, probably was um, the Bulls. You know what I'm saying? Growing Chicago? up. Yeah, growing, growing up in East Chicago. And, um, you know what I'm saying? I was in the 90s area seeing the Jordans. And, you know what I'm saying? And, 
you know what I'm saying, them win, win the rings and, you know what I'm saying, just being that kid, like I say, I only saw it was on the local channel. I ain't had cable, so, you know what I'm well, saying, I saw all, I saw all they games, so. WGN? Oh, y'all, for sure, WGN, mm -hmm. that's without yeah. a doubt. So, yeah. um, and then, you know what I'm saying, all my family and friends, you know what I'm saying, being able to come to the games and see me play, like, every day, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, every single game for them being able to see me play. And, um, you know what I'm saying, I had some good years in Chicago. And, um, Shoot, I got my biggest deal after that. After you know what I'm saying, I played in, or played for the Bulls. I got to rock out. So, just that time was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like you drink, like you were like as a kid, you like, damn man, you put on a Bulls jersey, like I knew it's that crazy. Was like you couldn't even imagine that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Putting on that, mm -hmm. then going to actually, you know what I'm saying, playing and doing it, like that shit is crazy. It's mm -hmm. real. Bro. Oh, favorite teammate. Favorite teammate? Oh, come on, man, that's tough. That's tough. Use my teammate one time, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Use my teammate yeah. one time. He's, you know what I'm saying? Trying to make us get him penny butter jelly sandwich. Come on, man, do this, do that. Nah, nah, B Baz was cool, man. Um, I don't know, that's tough, man. A lot of good teammates. That's that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. One of my favorite teammates, though. That's tough. Why you gonna do me like that? One of your favorites, bro. Um, it's hard though, cause that's I, hard. Yeah, I mean, cause I, yeah, cause I had like Jameer, like me and Jameer, super tight. We wanted a few that talk like afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, um, shit, me though, like you know what I'm saying. I mean, like the shit, like you know what I'm saying. We we pretty cool. Um, a lot of I don't know, but I don't know. Probably Drew Holiday, probably one of my favorite teammates. Drew I have Holiday to say, was your yeah, Drew Holiday, one of the teammates that I'm, you know what I'm saying, I'm one of the coolest with mm -hmm. off the court. Um, one time when I was in New Orleans, my last year in New Orleans. They was trying to BS me on my playing time. Like, I feel like I should have been starting playing 30 minutes a game. They had me coming off the bench playing like 18, like 18 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. And the dudes that was playing in front of me at the time, I was better than. They, they was younger. Like, I feel like they was going to be better than me, like, at some point. But at that point in time, they wasn't better than me. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. And um, it was some games. Um, like, sometimes I wouldn't play that much. And um, Drew, like, see? And I, and I come and play, and I'll ball out, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I play, I play like 20 minutes, get 22 points. I play 16 minutes, get 18 points. Like, I'll come and get straight to it. And Drew, like, see, every time each one play, every time each one play, we win. Like, he told our GM, said that. And He's like, the newspaper, like, That's like tough, said man. that in the interview yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? That was pretty, that was pretty dope, you know what I'm saying? He had my back. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Drew, he probably, he one, of, he one of my guys. Even though I got a lot of them, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But just that moment right there was pretty was pretty dope. Yeah, pretty yeah. big for him, you know what I'm saying? So you so you got a um you was a part of some of the NBA politics to where it's like oh, you know what? For where you, sure. Where you play get for sure. where young guys get to for play sure. in front of you and for um, sure. You know, situation like that. Like a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of fans I feel like don't understand like, you know. That's how the game be going. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a uh, lot of stuff behind the scenes where it's just not your abilities to play basketball. Yeah, it's yeah. other stuff. It's contracts. It's numbers. It's right. coaches versus GM, right, GMs. GMs right. versus coaches. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'd have been in, I'd have been, I've been in that situation a couple times. Yeah. So, like, um, right. So, like, when I was in New Orleans, um, we had switched GMs my last year. So, mm -hmm. the people that the GM brought in, he wanted to play. But the coach wanted to play somebody mm -hmm. else. You know what I'm saying? So it was going like back and forth. And, um, even though the gym was full of shit, I won't, I won't really <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, so um, but yeah, so man, it's a lot of politics. Uh -huh. But like you say again, like man, sometimes you just gotta control what you can. Like exactly. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you try to let if you let all that stuff get in your head, which which makes the difference with people. <laughs> that makes the difference between people playing. Yep. Shit, four or five years in the league, yep. and me yep. be able to last 11 yep. years, you know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. If I don't let all that stuff get in the way. Yep. But in my mind, I'm like, no way, I'm going to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Like, man, fuck what they talking about. I know yep. I can hoop, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So you just got to keep pushing through it for yep. sure. So attitude was big in that moment, huh? Oh, you yeah. having the right attitude. Yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, I was mad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I let them know about it, but at the same but time, but you gotta handle it, though. I, I know you. Yeah, but at the same time, you yeah. can't just like go crazy. You know what I'm saying? You can't mm -hmm. like lose yourself to where now you get in the game and they do these. You know what I'm saying? You do, do get in the game and you underperform. They can be like, see, that's why we ain't play you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. So even so, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. it had been some time early on. Like when you mad when you get mad. Yeah. And you, and you your your emotions um, take you out of playing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like. So, 
So exactly. like, so my thing is, is 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 one of them things. Well, we, me and, and we TJ, we, we always yeah. kind of like yeah, right. be having conversations about mm -hmm. um, things like this because mm -hmm. you know he trained so many kids and right. and then I be, and I throw my two cents into what right. he can you know do with his program and, right. you know, to help his kids mm -hmm. you know like um, because the key to success like especially at you know the places that we've been right mm -hmm. we've played whether you play overseas or play in the NBA like some things ain't gonna go your way. Right. Mm -hmm. So the number one thing, some of the main things you got to have is an incredible attitude. Right. And you sure. got to have a incredible work ethic. Oh, yeah. You know what for I'm saying? Because sure. it have been plenty of times where I done got on the court mad. Right. And so mad. I was sitting on the bench so mad that when I got in the game, I didn't play well. Right. Exactly. So, but when I got it, when I was on the bench, just prepared and just waiting right. my turn, I balled out. Right. Went crazy. So, so you know, you know, all the kids and, you know, right. all the young players in the league watching, um, Man, make sure you have control what you can control, like you oh, said. Oh yeah, for sure. And um, you know, so that that's having a great attitude mm -hmm. and working your butt off, and 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 usually great things gonna happen for you. Down, you know, at oh, the end yeah. of the day, you know what I'm saying. So for sure, like my, I feel like my career was made off that, honestly. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Me personally, like um, obviously I had to have the skills, I had to be enough. Um, yeah. But I feel like just having that right, the right approach, the mental, the mental mm -hmm. side is what got me over the hump. Mm -hmm. Like looking like my first year, I go to a veteran team. Mm -hmm. And I start off playing like, I mean, sparingly, then I might not play, and then somebody get hurt, you know what I'm saying? But instead of me being over there, man, like, damn, why I ain't playing, why I ain't playing, why I ain't playing? Every time I got in the game, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was ready, I was able to shine them. I mean, me and B Bass in the pick and roll, I'm hitting them, getting them in their spots, like, yeah. and it's like we ain't skip a beat, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and then like um like I played in Orlando, it was cool. My first year when I was in Chicago, it was like that. I went I reverted back to that in Chicago. I go on a, another good team which championship caliber team. Got mm -hmm. Pyle Gasol, Jimmy, Taj Joe Kim, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I just there again, play some, might not play, might not play five games. You know, at, in my head obviously I'm like, man, what what's going on? But um every time I get in, I'm 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 ready to go. I'm, I'm getting mm -hmm. twenty minutes, I'm getting sixteen points, I'm you know what I'm saying? I'm right to it. So just having that right approach is for sure. And that and to me, that was me being tough. You know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. yeah. to me, I feel like the easiest way is like I could easily go cut somebody out, F you, F you, F you, and then get kicked out and go home. You know what I'm saying? That's the easy way out. The tough way is being like, man, you know what? I'm going to prove y'all wrong. Like, I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to be here in your face every day letting you know that, yeah, I'm ready. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it, it, that, was, that was my toughness. Is that what you credit your longevity of being able to play 11 years in the league? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. Being mentally, being mentally, mentally, tough. Mentally, mentally tough for sure. So uh, basically, what both of y'all are saying mm -hmm. is just you got to be able to play the game within the game. That too, yeah. That That's part it. too, yeah. You know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. just hearing both of y'all talk, y'all saying right. how the GM is stupid, but you got to be able to play the game and just be like, all right, cool. I know I should be playing, but let right. me have a good attitude. So I'm gonna play the game to make them. Because what they waiting on y'all to do is just have a bad attitude so they can give you. Like, this is the reason why we ain't right. playing them. You mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. So. I mean, that's one way to look at it. One, one, one way could be that they want to see this young guy play. Or one another way, they may be trying to trade this veteran player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You never know what's the root, what's the issue. Right. Like, Because yeah. I done been in a situation where all those happened. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember exactly. in Boston at one time, they was trying to trade me. Right. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. couldn't get what they wanted from me, so they ain't trade me. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a lot of it's a lot of different scenarios. That's why it's just so important to like not really necessarily take it personal, even though it's personal, and just control what you can control. And that's you know? the best advice that y'all give the young that's, hoopers. That's right the now. best thing I could give to you because mm -hmm. like um, anything else, you're gonna be playing games with yourself. You're gonna be playing games in your mind. Right. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Of what you think they they doing. But if you stay patient, it might just work in your favor, right? Because I, I, I play with players, right? I play with a player who, man, this guy was player of the month, bro. And in the next month, he probably was out the league. Wow. Just because of, like, the attitude. Right. Just mm -hmm. because just looking at a situation wrong. And this is my guy. This is my young guy. He, you know, he looked up to me, right? And I, and, and I, and I tried to tell him, but he was kind of strong-minded and strong-headed, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but it was like one of them things where, you, you know, sometimes you gotta live and learn. Yeah. And, and, and for me, it's like, you, right. don't be want, you don't want young guys to live and learn, cause I, sure. you know, cause it's, it get tough, you know? Right. You, 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 you could turn in, you know, it could be a three year career, but it could have been 11. Right. 
just over your attitude and how you just looking at something wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, that would be my advice for, for, the, for the young guys uh, about that. Uh, but um, yeah, this, it's, it's the NBA, man.